the semi-final match will determine who faces off with Fabricio Andre in the Ooh, big shot by Shane here in the yeah, opening wasting seconds. Wasting no time, showing some top game. Oh, wow, Beautiful. look at that. Almost gets the top position from it as well. Will score the takedown points, but he almost landed in side control. That was intense. <laughs> he really almost did end up in side control, which should have been a uh, much different start to this match, but still coming in on top with two points. Beautiful it's recovery. Funny, Jamil, so well known for his guard, uh, his lasso guard in particular, and an amazing guard player, but showing he's got some wrestling to match it. Absolutely, absolutely. We saw that at the pans, he, his use of his wrestling and his guard combined. Now we're gonna have a, we're gonna roll out of bounds, probably have a reset here. And just under 45 seconds uh, into the match. Interesting to see Sarge's right leg crossed over the top of Shane's hip um, rather than battling for inside position. Interesting what the interested in what the goal is here for Sarge. Two into our classic 50-50 here now, but Shane Jamil using the left foot on the bicep as a spider grip. If he stays on his uh, on his back as Sadri comes up, he'll give up the two point reversal. But it looks like he's kind of opting to either stay side by side or. I think come up Jamil on top. could be looking for the 50 50 armbar here. The way that he has the sleeve and the elbow control, mm -hmm. can't, can't see it from this angle, unfortunately. There we can see, look at that. The way that he has the cross sleeve grip and gripping behind the elbow, like almost on the tricep. Look to possibly see. Okay, he let the go of the grips, but could possibly have uh, done much like Mateus Gabriel did yesterday in the lightweight division. One thing I really love about Shane's game is he doesn't accept the bottom position just to do teeter-totter sweeps because a lot of times um, really talented guard players will allow themselves to be swept because they want to play from the bottom. But Shane, I never really see him concede position or concede any points. So if he's on top, he's on top. And I really like that about his style. And here on... Almost what looked like a toe for a moment. Oh, coming, coming up with up a onto grip. the back here. Look Beautiful for a big back clinch. Return. Ooh, big spin by Sodre here as they go out of bounds. Wow, nice defense there from Sodre. Uh, stuck to his back like a tick was Jamil Hill Taylor. The yep. wrestling, such an underrated factor for the tier light black belt here in this match. I think it's actually. Something of a surprise. I mean, those who have seen him in action will know. They've seen glimpses of it, but it, we haven't really seen him use it at this level in the World Championships against other black belts, and it's refreshing to see him mixing up his lasso, his guard game with these, these powerful wrestling sequences. Sajer with a big sweep attempt here, almost tilting Shane over and just enough, but not quite. Shane was able to use his, kind of his head and his shoulder as opposed to come back up on top. That was a beautiful spider guard attempt. Just three minutes in, you have seven minutes to go. Only two points on the board are from that uh, beautiful single leg in the beginning of the match by Shane. That landed him for a brief second in side control, but good, great recovery by Sandre. We're gonna have a reset here to the center of the match. It looks like the, uh, the head referee is heading over. Oh, it looks like there's a communications problem communications. because the, yeah, the, the main table, the referees, ha they have a, um, a video replay system and they have side referees that communicate with the main referee via radio. And it seems that unfortunately he's had to go figure out some technical issues before we can continue with this match. So. All right, here we go. Gonna get back started again. There is a uh, interesting. They penalized Sodre, and I'm not quite sure what for. May have been for the flea in the mat earlier. I I actually wondered about that myself during the back clinch scramble. It looked like he, to me, like he purposely scrambled out of bounds. But uh, 
I wasn't sure what the ref saw. Looks like that's probably what it was for. So now, Shane Bill Hill Taylor has a 4 0 lead against his opponent, Diego Sadre. I'd like to see Shane not rushing in this position. Steps through, but Sadre will come on top now for the two points. So it'll be, take the lead from 4-0 uh, to 4-2. To Beautiful work by Sadre stepping out and right into a big Toriano pass, really oh, bringing some pressure sweep. down. Jamil Hill Taylor stuck that lasso in. Yeah, that is oftentimes a saving grace on those big guard passes if you can bring your foot underneath the armpit and create some space and some torque on the outside of that elbow. Well, even more so for somebody like Jamil Hill Taylor, who the noted technician he has, what's known as the Lasso Syndicate, a um, a group where he promotes and highlights lasso guard techniques. And while well, we saw him use it also at the, the Pan Championships where he took gold just a couple of months ago, and really it was the lasso guard was one of the biggest factors to, to his victory there at that tournament. I haven't seen quite as much of it here this weekend, but we're getting a glimpse here. Lasso spider. Diego Sodre sat oh, squatting down, but now lifts his base up. Both feet flat on the mats. Look for Jamil Hill Taylor to unbalance him. Nice switch from the spider to the De La Hiva from Shane. And now stepping on the ankle, that was an interesting detail. Kind of stepped on the ankle with his right foot, created some space, and then brought that right foot in underneath the hips. Back to the spider. One thing really powerful about Shane's positioning with his hips, we just saw it. He'll tilt to his right hip to stick the lasso deeper, and then he'll tilt back to the left to open the knee and off-balance Sadre to his right side, which is a nice kind of setup for a lot of the other entries he's looking for. Just under four minutes remaining now. Yeah, wow, big flip over, not quite a sweep, but a as defense see, to yeah. the pass. <laughs> Sondre tried to run around to the side, but as a lasso guard player, that's what you want sometimes. It gives you the leverage from which to flip your opponent over. Came close to getting it, but Sondre just popped straight back on top. Yeah, interesting, we've seen Sadra, I think in the last match he had as well, kind of in this squatted position while passing. Um, all, all the way up on his toes, his, his feet like completely flexed, which typically it's not somewhere I would want to hang out in the, in the top of the guard. I would feel really off balance, but it looks very comfortable there. Nice work by Shane's right leg. You can kind of shoot into some triangles here. Uh, you can go back to the spider. We saw him go to De La Hiva to the hip, double lasso. And or he can pull that elbow with his right hand and start to open up the tricep and the shoulder of Sadre. A penalty call against both competitors here for what the referee has deemed to be a lack of activity. We see the lasso combined with the De La Hiva on the left side for a moment there. Just really, really locks the person's upper body to their leg. 2.20 remaining. Shane's still leading by that two. Pace has definitely slowed down now, and I'm looking over, I can see the coaches and the spectators all claiming that there's uh, 
stalling tactics at play here. I'm not so sure that's the case, Kendall. What do you think? I think that uh, the pressure really is on Sajja right now, and Shane knows that he doesn't need to score to win. Of course, he's looking for attacks, but doesn't doesn't look desperate. Doesn't look like there's too much pressure on him, and so definitely slowed down the pace. Um, we hear, if you guys hear in the background, everyone's going crazy for the. <laughs> there's a, a finalist that was just decided on the other side. A little bit quieter on our side over here as the action slowed down. But about 120 left, and again. Doesn't look like a stalling tactic to me. Just looks like the pressure is not on Shane. So he's taking the opportunities as they come, creating some action, but he's not desperate to create the same pace that we normally do see from him. The struggle, the struggle is for the person on top too, when you're in kind of like a, a double lasso or a deep lasso, if you're going crazy to pass, then you're forcing the person on bottom to defend and it creates a lot of action. If you hang out, then it does. It could show the person on top as stalling and they could get a penalty. So it's a hard battle of what to do there when you feel completely locked in. Trying to close the right elbow, I mean, he's trying to clear that lasso, but Shane doing such a good job elevating that left foot. I like the stapling with the right foot here too from Sadre. Combined with his pant grip, he's kind of double, double teaming it up to kill Shane's right leg. 25 seconds remaining now, and you see the way that Sodre is desperately trying to walk around that lasso, but has not been able to find his way out of this trap. He's doing everything he can. He's trying to kill the near side leg. He's trying to step on it, but that lasso too tight, too deep. And now you see the clock run down. Inversion from Jabil Hill Taylor, who will move through into the final of the featherweight division to face off with Fabricio Andre. That a rematch of the Pans semi final that took place back in September. Shane Jabil Hill Taylor was able to beat Fabricio Andre there. Well, they will rematch, they will face off again here in the final of the World Championships, and Shane Jamil Hill Taylor will become, well, we'll have the opportunity to become one of the few Americans for a second World Championship gold medal. In all three of the lightest weight classes have an American in the final. That's incredible. Wow. That's right. Rooster weight, light featherweight, and featherweight all have American competitors in the finals. A sign that the globalization of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is truly happening. Here's a, uh, a look at that wrestling exchange. Kendall, you're a wrestler. What do you think? <laughs> I think it was beautiful. When you're on singles like that, you got to keep the person moving on their feet, kind of tilting one way, then back to the other, and kind of got some forward pressure and then took him right back. It was perfect. Big passing work here, but with that deep lasso in, just not enough 